Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Barbican Theatre for another one of our Thursday night webinars. It's so great to have you here and to be looking at stage management this evening. Um, a couple of house notices We're on Zoom webinar. I hope you've all used it by now. Potentially you haven't. But just in case you need to know where you are, you can't unfortunately speak to us or show your video. But that means you can relax when you're at home. But if you want to ask any questions from Tim or have got any opinions, we have got the chat function and the Q&A function. Um, down below at the bottom of your screen that you can use um, and we recommend throughout if you ever have a question just fire it up there and when we get to the Q&A part of the talk I'll make sure I ask Tim about it. Um, we run all these sessions for free and we always make sure we pay all of our wonderful presenters who are leading these masterclasses so if you can donate anything please 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 it's so greatly appreciated and we really really value your time and how much you give to us for that. So please, please, please give us some money if you can. I think that's enough of the plugging and all the general house rules. Um, and it's now time to welcome Tim Norman. Hopefully his video will pop up right now. Um, Tim is a wonderful stage manager and local artist based in Plymouth. Tim I can has been working with us on a couple of projects, probably since last July, Tim-ish. That's probably, um, yeah. Yeah, last summer, end of last summer. End of last summer. And I cannot tell you the amount of times Tim has been the most wonderful stage manager and has saved my own skin. And I cannot thank for that. He is really insightful. He's brilliant with all the artists he works with. He's worked with a variety of projects with us, with Nudge, with TRP. He's even worked with Catherine Jenkins. Uh, he's been from London to Plymouth to the rest of the country and beyond. He is a wonderful person to be talking about this tonight. And I can't wait to hear more from him. So. Time for me to shut up. Time to give over to Tim. Amazing. Thanks, James. I mean, that was a much better introduction than I think I'm about to do. So um, do you want to just do the presentation for me, maybe? But um... I can if you want. I'm not sure it'd be insightful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, amazing. So I'll crack on. Great. So tonight we are talking um, an intro into the art of good stage management, a.k.a. keeping it together for a stress free show. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about me. Um, so as James has given me a great introduction, um, yeah, my name's Tim Norman and I am currently the sort of resident stage manager at the Barbican Theatre, doing lots of sort of work with the Rebels um, and all the different projects that's going on with the Barbican Theatre at the moment. Um, so I'm an early career stage manager, which I thought there was it was going to be quite an important thing to say at the top of this um, masterclass. Um, so I've been working professionally in stage management for roughly just just about two years, just over two years. Um, but I, you know, and I've, I've done other sort of bits, technical bits um, before that. So basically what, why I thought it was important to mention that is there are some wonderful stage managers and colleagues that I work with and some incredible um, people that have so much experience um so i'm just talking from my own point of view and the wonderful things that i've learned um over the past couple of years rather than talking from a you know i've got 15 years of experience i'm not talking from that point of view um yeah great okay so um yeah life for plymouth so i'm i'm from kent so for me growing up i always thought that I was going to be an actor. That was my dream. I was always involved in um, amateur dramatics. I was always, um, you know, pro performing, being a performer mainly. Um, but what I found doing um, those different performances and being in amateur dramatic shows and all those things is I really enjoyed how the show worked. I really enjoyed being backstage. I really enjoyed um, watching technicians work and people putting lights up and seeing all of these people dressed all in black with headsets on and wanting to know what they were saying and what they were doing. And um, that really, really interested me. Um, and I thought that that's just because I'm nosy and I wanted to know everything. Uh, so I moved to Plymouth to study at the Plymouth Conservatoire um, and I studied acting. I did a degree in acting um, and I mean, Plymouth Conservatoire is wonderful. It's a uh, great community and I have learned a lot 
from that place. And I do kind of, I don't think that I would be where I am doing what I am now had I not come to Plymouth Conservatory and done acting. So I'm very grateful to them. Um, so whilst I was training, um, much like everyone at uni, uh, you realise you need to get a job pretty quick uh, if you want to keep surviving, you know, and funding all of those Saturday nights. Uh, so I got a job at the uni, at the university itself, um, and I worked for the Faculty of Arts and Humanities um, in their sort of marketing and events department. Um, I was kind of the assistant to that faculty, uh, to that department. Um, so we put on all of the open days, applicant days. Uh, we did a student showcase in the um, in the summer, and sort of lots of uh, arts um, gallery nights for uh, uh, showcases for students' works, and lots of different events throughout the year. Um, and I I worked with them. Uh, during my training, uh, so that was a that was kind of a really uh, great place for me to, to learn how to put an event on um, and everything that goes into an event, um, from down to you know your risk assessment and um, everything that you need to include in that. So, what's your counter terrorism uh, plan? You know what what are you going to do if um, a toilet explodes and, you know, what, what happens if, um, you know, what, what, what if is a, is kind of a big thing that, you know, you have to plan, you, you write a big plan, a uh, big events plan, and you go through everything that could and might happen. Um, as well as, you know, doing all the fun things like getting everything ready, making sure that all the catering's there and, and all you're planning all these things all the time for every event. Um, so I did that throughout university. And that was, the reason that's important is because there's a nice mesh um, between events world and stage management, but I'll get onto that in a bit. Um, so whilst I was in my second year, um, an opportunity came up from our placement officer to um, be the deputy stage manager for uh, the Theatre Royals community show that year, which was Citizen. And I think the email uh, that came through was something like, hi, uh, we're looking for two Plymouth Conservatoire students to join our, our production um, in an assistant stage manager role and a deputy stage manager role. Um, some of your responsibilities may include running rehearsal rooms, um, sourcing and making props and marking up the stage, uh, as well as many other things. That was kind of what the email said. And I was like, wow, you know, that's great. I've always been interested in backstage. I've always been interested in how you make a show happen, how you make it work. So I thought, okay, we'll go for that. Um, and yeah, that, that turned out to be an absolutely incredible experience. And it definitely was a light bulb moment for me of going, oh, amazing. All of these things growing up that I enjoyed about theatre, all the sort of backstage of the mechanics, how it works. That's what this job is. That's what being a DSM, being an SM, being a stage manager, that's what that is. You, you know, so it was a real light bulb moment for me of going, amazing, okay, I think I've found the thing, the career I want to do, um, which was amazing. So, uh, yeah, I'm talking about community theatre there as well. So the other thing that came out of doing that placement was how much I enjoyed community theatre. Um, I... For kind of that's like where my main interest lies. Um, I, I love, you know, obviously I love all aspects of theatre and all different types, um, you know, but for me working with community is sort of uh, where my passion lies and one of my favourite things to do. I think in terms of being a stage manager in a community theatre setting, uh, it's a lot, it can be really rewarding um, and you take on, as well as obviously, uh, you know, being a stage manager and making sure that the show happens and everything gets done that needs to get done. Um, and being that you, you get to take on a nice sort of, sort of pastoral um, side to it as well. And you get to see people develop uh, and, and grow. Because obviously in community theatre, not, you know, everyone is not necessarily a professional actor. So it's really great to kind of get that um, added uh, element to it as well. Um, yeah, and then... I yeah I've written about a community night at uni I just started running things um 
at the conservatoire, just started running community nights and putting events on there. Um, and yeah, so whilst I was uh, doing Citizen, which was my placement, I met a wonderful, um, well, I met two wonderful stage managers. Um, so the stage manager for the show is a very good friend of mine. Um, and the other stage manager who basically taught me everything that I know, her name's Jeanette. Um, she is a fabulous Plymouth based um, stage manager, company manager, production manager extraordinaire, um, who now teaches a lot of people like me that are, you know, want to become a stage manager. So uh, she is my almighty mentor and has taught me a lot, if not everything that I know. Um, yeah, so she, she uh, sent me uh, an email about working with Nickelodeon, which was um, crazy and one of those uh, opportunities that you just have to take. So uh, um, Nickelodeon were filming their Broadway musical, SpongeBob the Musical, at the Theatre Royal in Plymouth um, for the Nickelodeon Channel's uh, Christmas special. So I uh, obviously accepted. I was like, yeah, yeah, I really want to work on that. So I ended up working on that as a production runner, um, which, it, I mean, that was a fantastic experience. Um, it was, what was really great about that and really interesting is, is it was this hybrid of, it's a musical theater show, but it's being filmed for TV. Um, so it was a really great hybrid of the theater and TV world. And as well as learning, you know, even more skills in, um, in sort of the stage uh, world, um, it was another light bulb moment for me of going, oh, everything that I've just learned for the past year in stage management is actually super transferable into film and sort of production roles. Great, you know, and, it, and it's, it for me, it was like realizing, oh, I can, you know, I can go down this route and do theater, but I can also go and do TV or I can, um, yeah. And it was, it was a really great sort of, springboard um that widened my scope of um what stage management is and what it can do so that's a little bit about me um so i thought uh what i would do is kind of talk about stage management give a little bit of a crash course into what goes into it from the beginning so pre-production which you know from a meeting from an idea from a table read to the end product because as i was saying earlier that's always fascinated me. It's, I've always been fascinated in how does this go from being an idea, from being um, a script, a table read, um, or a, a production meeting to being these fantastic, well-lit, well-sounding, brilliant shows that you see. So pre-production. Um, so in terms of stage management, I personally, my personal opinion is pre-production is the most important bit um it's the it's the bit where you can really put all your eggs in your basket and just really get ahead um and be in a great position for when you get to show week and all those different things so as i said here it's the main work that goes in for the show um and usually it will start with a production meeting um and that is a great point as a stage manager to get as much knowledge as you can about the show you want to be knowing everything um, the stage manager themselves, the actual stage manager, they are the central point of information um, for every department. Everyone's going to be asking them questions. They are the person that makes everything happen. Um, so you need to absorb as much information as you can, um, as quickly as you can. Um, so, you know, so you, you make the production go smoothly. You make everyone's jobs and everyone's lives a lot happier and a lot easier. Um, so yeah, so as I've said here, it's about gathering as much information as you can. It's, um, you know, you want to find out about the set, the props, the costume, uh, lighting design, sound design, set design, um, making it safe. Um, cause this is a great point, uh, as well for finding out what props you, they think are going to be needed. So if it's something really extravagant or really huge, that's a great time for you to go out and find it, get it, um, you know, start thinking about where you're going to find that. Um, and I've written some points here that, you know, just things that you always need to be thinking about, um, like set design. 
thinking, you know, how is it safe? How's that going to work? So let's say you're doing a production of Romeo and Juliet with the iconic balcony scene. Um, how high is the balcony? Is the balcony going to be safe? Is there railings? Is it, um, obviously, everyone's going to work towards making it safe so that no one gets hurt. Um, but as a stage manager, you, you know, you've got to think about health and safety all the time. So is it, you know, these sort of questions you want to be asking, how, how are we going to make it safe? Do we need to add some extra layers, some extra elements to mitigate risk? Do, can we make it safer? Is it, uh, same with costume design. Um, are they wearing the most iconic, stunning um, dress that's got a huge corset on it and it's got a massive, um, you know, massive skirt to it. But in the next scene, the costume that they're wearing is um, a tank top and um, like some shorts. So is there a quick change? How is it, how's it going to be possible when it's, your, your whole point of sort of pre-production is being able to solve problems, asking questions to everyone, finding out as much as you can and solving problems so that you don't get three weeks, four weeks into rehearsals, uh, into your dress rehearsal, and suddenly you're going, oh, we can't make this quick change. It doesn't happen because you've mitigated that risk because you've, you've asked the question, um, hi, I just want to check with the costume. There is going to be, you know, a, a tear away or there is going to be an option for them to get changed quickly, isn't there? You know, you're asking that early on so that we don't get into, re into dress rehearsal and a whole new costume's got to be built, uh, which costs more money, which doesn't make your producer very happy. Um, whole, you know, waste time because then that person hasn't got costume, so they don't feel comfortable in it. And, and it just, you, you're trying to put the cogs in place so that they all turn at the same time and no one's holding anyone up and nothing could possibly go wrong. I say very loosely because some things do go wrong sometimes and it's being able to think as much as you can. Although I'm saying, you know, you want to think of, you want to consider everything and anything that could happen. Sometimes you don't um, and that's okay. It's being able to uh, think quickly on your feet. But again, talk about that a bit later. Um, I've also written here about it being the administrative part of the process. So this is a big part of pre-production. You know, you're going to want to be making your schedules and your rehearsals and booking rehearsal spaces and making sure that um, people are going to arrive on time and there's going to be enough rehearsals and that your director feels satisfied that they've got enough rehearsals um, and that your producer's happy that it's not going to cost too much. And, you know, all those things. Uh, you really need to consider and think about. Um, and it's a great place that once you've got all of this sorted, you're like, great, cool. I can move on. So that would kind of be pre-production from an entire sort of stage management point of view. Um, so what I'm going to do, oh, you know, here's some examples of, of what a production schedule could look like. So this was actually for our show week. Um, so you've got your time ins, what's happening and who's involved. Um, and this one that I created for our Rebels Music Live show uh, that we did. This is more of like a minute by minute. Um, so as you can see, this one tells you timings um, and what's happening. But this one's a lot more detailed. Um, and this is what I call like a minute by minute kind of thing. Um, so I... Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is... Uh, yeah, like a minute by minute um, one. If you haven't seen Rebels Music Live, you should, I'm pretty sure the link's on YouTube. You should go watch it because it was really good. Uh, but yeah, so that's just an example of one sort of schedule. Um, and this is the kind of thing that, so if I made this in pre-production. Um, so I made this, a, we started, a, I think we started about three weeks before. So I made this about three weeks before the actual event, sent it, to everyone um, and then sent it to the producer and uh, the technical manager and the cast. And then we, you know, they all came back and went, oh, actually, I'm not gonna be able to arrive at that time because I'm still, you know, doing this, doing that, da, 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 whatever. So you go, okay, great, no worries. And you go and revise it and you make a new one and you make it work for everyone. Um, so that's why it's really important to get these things sorted earlier rather than later. It's all just about making sure that everyone's on the same page. And as I said before, all those cogs are turning. Um, yeah, maybe that's really nerdy, but I really enjoy things like that.
this is like one of my favorite things. Um, so I'm going to talk about sort of the different roles um, in stage management now. So um, you have, so I've done the abbreviations here. So we would, normally you would have an ASM, a DSM and an SM. So an ASM, assistant stage manager, assistant to the stage manager, deputy stage manager, deputy, yeah, it's in the name, um, your stage manager. And then what I've written here is a CSM. You might see this abbreviation sometimes, um, and that's a company stage manager. Um, and that is kind of, you're rolling two roles there together, really. You're rolling your stage manager role and your company manager into one. Um, and previously, I've done this role without really realising that it's that's what it is. Um, so the company stage manager is in the name you're looking after the company as well as looking after all the technical and performance elements as a stage manager would um so what i'm going to go through is like briefly go through what those roles might encompass again as i said earlier i i myself am um i'm still quite new so a lot of this is from personal experience and working in these different roles what i have picked up um and there might be other stage managers who know a lot more and will have a lot more experience on what these different roles are. Um, but yeah, these are mainly sort of things that I have had experience of doing in these different roles. Um, great. Oh, and I thought before we go on, this was a really good statement. Um, a stage manager told me this once and I don't think I've ever forgotten it because it's so true. And I think if you're at the moment kind of going, this sounds really cool. This sounds like something, you know, I, I'd, I'd want to be involved in. This is a sentence to remember. Stage managers are always the first ones in and the last ones out. Um, and those are words I live by because it's very true. You will always be the first one in the building, uh, the earliest, nice and early in the morning, and you will always be the last one out, which means, yes, when you finish a show, you will be the last one to the pub, which is very sad. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, an assistant stage manager, some of the roles uh, that, you know, some of the things that you may do as an assistant stage manager, um, yeah, setting up a rehearsal room, sourcing and making props, printing scripts and schedules, taking actors to costume fittings, making tea, that's a great one. Um, I, I, I just, you know, it's always good to offer everyone tea and make, making sure everyone's happy with that. Um, that's probably, lots of people disagree with me with that, but I like to do that one. Um, ensuring the smooth running of the production. If you're a part of the stage management team, your entire job is the smooth running of the production. Whether you're the ASM, the DSM, or the SM, your job is to make sure that it runs and that all those cogs, as I was saying earlier, all of them are turning and they keep, keep running. So all of those things that I've just kind of said uh, are happening pre-production, they're happening in rehearsals, um, and they're happening in uh, sort of tech week. Um, and you are, you're the assistant to the stage manager. You do anything that needs to happen. The stage manager asks you to do something and you will do it. Um, but it's also about having a lot of initiative to just get these things done. Um, so knowing that you're gonna be in the first one in and you're going to get the rehearsal room set up you're going to be there and um you you, you might as uh, sourcing making props the stage manager has got a lot of um production documents to be thinking about they've got a lot of um you know different elements that they need to be thinking about the dsm has also got lots of elements they need to be thinking about so it's having the initiative to just go okay well i've been asked to go and source um oh an example a wedding cake that uh can be reused every show uh so it can't be edible so it's uh, you know and it's got to be cheap as well so we can't just buy a 100 pound 200 pound wedding cake but it's got to look expensive um and it's got to be reusable so it can't you know it can't be edible and all these different things you you know you don't you don't want to be asking questions you've got to be able to use that initiative um and just go out get it make it done um no dilly no dally if you will so uh it's a it's a lot of people like this role as well because it's it's super creative um you know making props sourcing props um getting different things you you spend a lot more time sort of talking to the company talking and making sure that they're all happy um it can be a it can be a really really good role 
um, I enjoy ASMing a lot. Um, yeah, so then during a show, you're going to be working with the SM to run the deck. So you're running the stage. Um, so your stage manager ultimately is responsible for the onstage and offstage areas. Um, and you as an ASM, you will have what we call a track. So that will be the route that you take every single show um, throughout the performance. So that could include moving set on stage and off stage, moving furniture on and off, um, helping an actor with a quick change. Oh, I mean, I've written them at the bottom. Um, so all of those will be a part of your track so that you know where you're going and what you're doing throughout the entire show. Um, everything runs like a well-oiled machine. Um, yes, uh, shout check as well. So after you've done all your amazing sourcing and making of your props, um, you are, when we're now in show week, the show's running, it's happening. You've got a lovely prop table that you've marked out with your tape where everything goes, it's got its own space. And before the show would start, you would do uh, your pre-show checks with everything and you do your shout check. So that is checking the props, checking they're all there. Last thing you need is an actor going on stage without uh, a prop. One show that I did many, many moons ago um, was uh, Amdram of Billy Elliot and uh, the scene with the letter and Billy went on without the letter. So the whole song's about the letter. So lots of, you know, so it's, um, it's super important that, that these checks are done before the show. Um, yeah, and then cleaning the stage before and after you will learn to mop. I love mopping. I love mopping a stage. I love hoovering a stage. I think it's great. It's very calming, very therapeutic. Um, yeah, lots of cleaning, lots of sort of maintenance. Uh, again, that's like, it's a health and safety thing. The last thing you need is someone cutting their foot, cutting their leg, injuring themselves because there's something on the stage that shouldn't be on the stage. Um, the same with like doing maintenance as well on props, keeping them looking fresh, um, all those different things. Um, you're there to assist the stage manager, as I said. Overall, this role assists the stage manager, um, uses initiative and just gets things done that needs to get done. Great. Deputy stage manager. Um, this, in terms of like a stage management team, uh, this is probably, I know I just said it about ASM, but this is probably one of my favourite things to do, show calling. Um, I, I just really enjoy it. So deputy stage manager is in the name you deputize to the stage manager. So if for whatever reason they would be unavailable, you, you would do their track uh, in a show. Um, but mainly as a, as an individual role, uh, your main job is to create the book. So in this photo that we've got here, you can see it's a photo of me. Um, you can see we've got a script uh, there. So this is what's called the book. So you've got your script on the left and then on the right you have uh, your cues, your blocking and your notes. So that's called the book and the book holds every piece of information. Um, so notes on blocking, where the actors are entering, where they're exiting, where they're going, what they're doing. Um, during a rehearsal, you might have to prompt the actors as well. So you're sat in rehearsals, uh, you've got your book, you're making the books, you're writing notes about blocking, you're following down the script, you've got the director next to you, so when they start, you've got them in one ear, you've got the show in the other ear, so when they start going, oh, it'd be really good to have um, 99 red balloons play in this scene, you can go, oh great, I'll just make a note of that, because I know later when I do uh, my report, I can tell sound department that we're going to have to get that song for the show. Um, but whilst that's happening, you've got someone going, oh, line, and you're the person going, oh, yeah, your line is, so, yeah. Uh, recording any changes to the script, again, it's just a super important thing. Um, the deputy stage manager is, you're, you're the earpiece for everyone. You're making all these notes. You're making sure that everyone's on the same board, uh, on the same page, um, and is on board with everything. Yes. Um, yeah, you're, you're... So you're making rehearsal reports. Uh, this is a super, super important um, thing. As I said, you, you've just heard your director say they want to add a song. 
So that's something that you would write in your rehearsal report. You want to make sure that you're adding notes to every department so that when we get to tech week, it's not like a, a big surprise that there's suddenly 20 songs that the sound designer um, or sound operator didn't know that they had to get. Um, and the lighting designer didn't know that he had to install lasers because there's a, a massive laser sequence. So the better your rehearsal report notes are, the more prepared everyone is. Um, hmm. And then a setting list and a list of cues for the stage manager. So a setting list, again, you've been sat there in rehearsals, you've been writing notes, you've been writing blocking. Um, and that setting list is, where's the furniture going? Um, where does it go in each scene? When does it come off? Um, what, what props are needed? Where are they needed? When are they needed? Um, so these are all lists of cues. So you can then write that as a list of cues for your stage manager and go, by the way, during rehearsals um, today for scenes one to seven, um, the director decided they wanted to use a chair um, for scenes two. So I've just noted down and, and by the end, you've created a whole list of cues for your stage manager and your assistant stage manager um, to get on board with. So it's, it's again, it's, it's helping each other in your stage management team. It's helping each other to be as efficient as possible um, and getting all these things sorted. Um, yeah. Yeah, so here's a rehearsal report that I just, I think I actually did for a real show. Um, so again, it's it, on here, it's got materials covered, general notes. Um, so things as like, oh, rehearsal rooms, that, rehearsals are taking place in a different room. Um, someone's leaving early. Um, yeah. And then you've got notes for your stage management team, your scenic and dressing team. And on the other side of it, you would have a box for lighting, for sound, for wigs, for uh, if you've got wigs involved, a wig department, um, for costume. Uh, and just a note, everyone gets a note. And what you do is you'd send this through to the head of all of those departments so that everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows what's happening, when it's happening, um, and if they need to go and design anything or make anything or have a conversation with the director about the feasibility of those things. A um, few more bits. So moving into the show, uh, during your technical rehearsal, you are putting the cues in the book. So every time you see a light go on on a stage, every time you see um, a light go off, every time a piece of set moves, every time someone raises from the floor, every time a thing comes down, that is your deputy stage manager who's show calling, who's sat in the corner in the dark with a headset on, looking like they're talking to themselves, making the whole thing happen. Um, and yeah, and, and it's your job to keep track of breaks and lunch. Um, you call all the elements in the show um, and then you make a show report at the end of each show. A little bit like a rehearsal report, but the show report will say, oh, this actor came on late or... Uh, that actor forgot their prop um, and you just make them concise you make notes and then you, you would send them again to your technical and creative teams so that anything that needs to get changed or or done um, can be seen and it's you know it can be spoken about and you time the show so that um, it's you know not running 20 minutes longer than it was a week ago and if it is then why is it doing that and that would be something that would then happen and be figured out with the director, the stage manager, everyone else. Great. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just show you a little bit of um, uh, just a couple of minutes of calling a show. So this is from the Adams family, I believe. Um, and this is the deputy stage manager calling the show. Oh, you guys. Thank you. Stand by, please. Track Q1. Standing by. Thank you. Stand by, please. Spot 1. Standing by. Thank you. Stand by, please. Spot 2. Standing by. Thank you. Stand by, please. Stage left. Standing by. Thank you. Stand by, please. Stage right. Standing by. Thank you. Stand by, please. Okay. Lovely. Are you happy for me to begin? Thank you. Thank you. LXQ3. LXQ21, fly Q2, and track Q1. LXQ22, 
I did too. Okay. Stand back these two and choose one and two. Thank you, thank you. Stand back these and the bird. Thank you. Go. And let's keep 56. Go. 57. Go. And let's keep 58. Go. Alex. Go. Alex, Q60 and 2, Q1. Go, Alex. Go, go. Alex, Q63. Go. Alex, Q94. Go. Alex, Q95. Go. Yeah, so that's just an example of a deputy stage manager calling a show. Um, I, I'm just a bit of a nerd, so I think that that's great and it really excites me. Um, so this is a picture from from my Citizen script, actually, when I uh, was a DSM on that. And the same as as how that DSM, you're, you're following the lines, so you should be following, obviously, the scores of people singing. And you're just, uh, wherever there's an arrow, you're just saying Alex Q9, go, AVQ2, go. And, and you go down um, and you just keep following down and that's kind of how you would call a show. So then moving on to the stage manager or company, company stage manager. Um, yeah, so you are, you are the head of the stage manager team. And you are, the, as I said earlier, the central point of information um, it's your job to collate information and uh, people come to you, they ask you everything and you have to be able to know all the different things. Um, and I've written a couple of things here, um, such as some of the jobs that you might be doing. So creating and setting up rehearsal schedules. I know I spoke about it a bit earlier. Um, so a lot of what I spoke about in the pre-production is your stage manager's job. A lot of what uh, happens in pre-production is, yeah, it's your SM and your CSM. They're the main person that will do that. Um, you create call sheets. You're arranging costume and wigs, fittings. Um, you're setting up, you're running rehearsals. You're working with the production manager on budgets and risk assessments. Again, because your production manager might be um, PMing on three different shows. So they're not always going to be able to be there for every rehearsal and every meeting and see what the risks could be. Um, so it's your job to go, oh, by the way, they're using this bit of set which I think could be a risk um, so can we make sure that that's in the risk assessment um, you manage furniture and props it's it's your job it's your team's job to manage those things make sure that they're maintained um, make sure that they're sourced uh, you supervise the get-ins and the get-outs uh, which are always fun and they're you know the get-out but if you're doing a big show the get-out could be until uh, like you know four o'clock in the morning um, once all the um elements of the show are in uh, are out the building um you strike set and props during scene changes uh, and your general responsibility is managing the backstage and on stage areas during performances uh as i said you you know you're the head of it you make it all happen you get everything um set up and going and working um those cogs you keep them all turning so that's kind of the different roles and different things that would happen in stage management. Uh, these are just some great skills that I think are really important for stage management. Um, time management skills, get a good watch. Uh, being on time, as I, as I said earlier, the first one's in, your last one's out. You want to be early all the time. You want to be at least 15 minutes early to every single rehearsal because you don't want to be getting in and putting chairs out or realising there's not enough chairs for a rehearsal or um getting in and someone else is in your room uh, which has happened um and Catherine Jenkins is on her way and there's no room for you and you think okay well what we're gonna do it's your job to you know get in early and make sure that these things don't happen so when your cast turn up it's not a mad panic it's everything's as if everything's fine and nothing's happened um organization skills you have to be so organized all the time and overly organized, I think, but not, you shouldn't let that restrict you either. Great communication, 
Um, working as part of a team, stage management is a team um, thing. It's not an individual thing. Can't be can't be selfish. Can't be individualistic in a stage management team. You have to be giving and sharing. Um, staying cool, calm, and collected. Um, yeah, you need to be able to think on your feet. You need to have a great toolkit. Oh my goodness, get as many types of tape as you can. Get as many pencils and pens and rulers and rubbers and um, post-it notes and, and everything and anything you can think of. Um, to have a good knowledge about technical elements. Um, for me, that's, that's how I got into stage management. I was interested about technical things and I went through that way. Um, I, you know, as I said, I was a performer originally um, that just was an absolute nerd about technical elements and I just went through that route. So uh, good knowledge about health and safety. Um, and overall, you just have to be caring. I think it's really important to be a caring person that can be someone that your company comes to, your cast comes to, um, or, you know, anyone backstage, technical crew can come to and, you know, and you can be there for them if they need that. Um, yeah. What's it like to work in different types of theatre? Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, so I, I was originally going to talk about what's a typical day in the life of a stage manager, but I didn't really think there is a typical day. And I think it works the same as working in different types of theatre. Um, so this is a photo I took from the Royal Albert Hall when I worked on the Catherine Jenkins show. Um, I was a production assistant on that. But again, it's, it's using those transferable stage management skills in these, um, in these different jobs. Um, so that's kind of how you think about theatre, you think about it, you know, being like that. But then, you know, you might do a show like this, which is in an, a warehouse old shop uh, with a, half the ceiling falling down and no heating and not a lot of running water. And, um, and it's, it's, you know, it is how it is. It's, it's being able to take those skills and those experiences that you've learned from being in a proscenium arch theatre, being in a theatre space um, and adapting them and using them in a space like this. So, for example, I can't do back of stage, uh, back of house calls here. I can't do front of house calls. So it's it's then working out, OK, how are we going to make sure all our cast are ready? How are we going to make sure that the audience, um, we know that the audience are coming in when they're meant to be coming in? How are we going to work out, um, you know, yeah, lots of different things. Um, so for this show, I was actually the technical assistant stage manager. Um, so if you look on the right hand side, that photo, you can see that I've got QLab open. So I was actually operating the sound during that show, um, as well as doing everything that the ASM role would do. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it's just being able to adapt your your skills and and working in unconventional spaces. Um, I really enjoy working in un unconventional spaces. It brings its own set of challenges. Like this building had no heating, so you know, okay, let's hire a load of heaters in, big industrial ones. Uh, how we how's everyone going to stay warm? Okay, we've got to make sure we tell everyone that they need to bring a coat all the time and bring an extra jumper. That's just something that needs to go out an email every every rehearsal. Um, you know, different things like that. Um. Yeah, again, just another, this is another place um, which if you've seen our Plymouth in its prime films, you will know that this features in it. Uh, and again, it's it's working out how, how do you make sure that we're going to be able to get the film that they want um, in, a, in a space that's outdoors. So what's the challenges here? Well, members of the public, it's a public space. So people are going to be sat there. They're going to be um, walking past, walking in the shot, um, you know, what are the health and safety risks there that we've got to think about? Okay, well, there's a drone flying. So, you know, if there's a drone flying, got to make sure we just tell people, hi, can you just make sure you stand back and all these different things. COVID as well. This was done during COVID times. So, um, oh yeah, I should mention some of the photos that you've seen are, during, are not during COVID time. That's why people are really close together and stuff like that. Um, just so, you know, um, yeah, so there's, there's, and, and so if you look on the right, I've got a schedule here that I made. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's looking at it and going, okay, well, is that going to work? Because we're in the middle of the city and we've got to keep driving around or, you know, we've got to walk here. Um, but what's really great is 
you make that schedule, you go to these places, you, you, you know, have a really good time shooting, and then you end up with a product like this, which I only show you a little bit. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm just going to show you a few seconds just so it's, um, <gasps> just so you can see. So it's, it's, you know, you're looking there and you're going, well, that's, that's that place there. Um, so it's really, it's really rewarding when you are working in, in a space that's unconventional and you've, you've gone through everything that could happen, that might happen. You're using all of your knowledge and skills that you developed from working in professional theatre, um, sorry, working in a, in a, professional theatre space but you're taking it outdoors and you know you might be in a skate park or you might be in a warehouse or um it's being able to just be adaptable and thinking on your feet and making those things happen um yeah I've kind of spoken a little bit about there um kind of about so you know a lot of why we've ventured out why we've gone outside is because of covid um so you can't really be in the theatre. I mean, COVID absolutely decimated our industry for the past year. So uh, that was quite hard as someone that's, you know, quite sort of early career and was trying to really build up. But it's then also been a really good thing because it's put me in a direction to where I am now. Um, but it's affected theatre because there's less crew allowed. Um, you know, you're doing more testing, so you've got to build that into your schedule. You've got to think, okay, well, testing takes 30 minutes. Um, I can't have loads of people getting tested at the same time. So that's adding on. How long is that adding on? Is it an hour? Is it is it half an hour? Is it an hour and a half? Um, all those different things. Um, and adapting sort of theatre to filming and live stream events, which, again, I'm, I'm really quite lucky that I have experience working in TV and film as well now. So it's it's drawing on all these skills all the time and developing your craft and constantly making sure uh, and constantly using different skills and different experiences to just keep going and keep, um, you know, being the best version of yourself that you can. Um, yeah, I, you know, carrying on from what I've just said there, it's, it's um, adapting those skills. So the skills that I talked about earlier, organisation, communication, thinking on your feet, um, you know, you can work in theatre or as a stage manager or TV and film or in live events. Um, you might work in one area and think, maybe that's not for me, but that doesn't mean you can't be a stage manager in other places. It doesn't mean, you know, that it's it's not for you. There might be something else that fits a bit better. Um, and it's just, it's constant. I think we're all constantly learning. I think the whole part of stage management is is as I keep saying, being the best that you can be, making sure that your productions work and they, you know, everyone keeps doing what they need to be doing. But it's, um, it, yeah, it's adapting as well and and constantly, constantly striving to be better. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. That was wonderful. Um, just a point, guys, uh, if you've got any questions to Tim, throw them in the chat. I've seen some people have been doing that already, but please do. There's also the Q&A function. Um, I'm going to start off with one of my questions, which I think comes on to this moment, of, obviously, about stage management. That traditional form you were talking about at the, at the beginning, kind of not being able to run currently and having a bit of that flexibility, because obviously you, you are still able, you're still doing calls. But I wondered how you try and bring those skills and abilities across to outside work. You sort of mentioned it with the production schedule, but say, how do you bring your skills that you've learned about theatre, how do you bring that into say an outside show where you might not have the equipment to communicate as well, or you just got walkie talkies? How do you bring that? Across? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a really good point. That's that's something that I, I should have mentioned. Thanks James. Um, it's it's definitely, it's, it's kind of, you're thinking, okay, well, I've I've got an outdoor show now that it's got the same elements and the same things that are happening that an indoor show would have. So how am I going to, as you're saying, how am I going to still make sure um, that 
XYZ happens, but I don't have my production desk or my production office, or I can't use my laptop. And yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is, you, you know, you, you use radios or um, you, you need to like be on WhatsApp or it's finding like what technology is going to work. What, what's the new thing that we can use um, to keep it outside. And it's kind of, it's kind of vague, isn't it really? What I've just said, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's, I think what was really shown across the whole presentation is just being a stage manager as being the most adaptable person in the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's so. When I was doing this this morning, and when I I, I was uh, for the past week, I've been building this presentation, and I've been kind of thinking like, what do I say, and how do I keep how do I keep saying things that aren't just be adaptable and and because it, I th but I think it is. I think it's it's the ability to go, oh Tim, this has got to happen. Um, outside and now it's starting to rain and you're going okay well we're going to go need to get a gazebo then and we're going to need a big umbrella and we're gonna you know it's it's like that last photo that i had on the thank you slide uh that's katherine jenkins ward walking in during, being filmed and it was a scene that i've forgotten to be filmed earlier so it was filmed on like day three but they you know they they did, it wasn't raining in in day one of filming so it's going and they're all going oh we can't film it now we can't have this moment and we're going no it's fine let's get umbrellas um let's you know make sure that she's always covered oh but you're going to be seen on camera fine we'll get chairs we'll stand on chairs and we'll hold the umbrellas up really really high so it doesn't look like it's raining and it's it's finding all these ways to adapt and change and just do anything to make the production happen and run and keep going that's great um i'm going to go to a couple of the guys questions that they've been sending through so thank you so much for attending for sending some questioning through one from an anonymous attendee which is what's the trickiest situation you've had to handle um what's the trickiest situation i've had to handle um so I'm, i can think of probably two off the top of my head um, so trickiest, like good trickiest was a show, uh, where I, so the show where I was the tech ASM on, um, it was all, it was quite last minute, uh, that I was brought onto that and mm. I was at home in Kent for Christmas, um, and I was, um, tasked with finding a burger van, um, which is, yeah, it's not necessarily like an easy prop or like, cause it was was a prop although it was like a piece of set we weren't actually you know using it as such so it was like it was a really large prop to try and find that was a big prop <laughs> <laughs> and like it had to be so it had to be like close to Plymouth um I only had a very very small budget and we wanted it for a week um you know so so it was like it was kind of like okay well I'm currently in Kent I'm 350 miles away I've got to try and get a burger van for next week with, I think I have like a hundred pounds to hire it with or something, you know, like it, it was not a lot of money to hire some, like something that's someone's business, but also we don't want any of the cookers in it. We don't want any of the gas in it. We don't want, we just want your empty van. And it, it's got to be a van that's got no, um, you know, uh, writing on it, nothing on it. It's got to be completely plain. Um, and I did it. Wow. Okay. How did you do that? That's, that's the question. How did you find those sources to get that sorted? Was it just you know? It's it's looking. It's it's looking anyway. I think I was looking on Facebook Marketplace. I was looking on uh, you know higher companies like online directories, and just calling everyone and every company and seeing if they were going to let us use their business on wheels as a setting as like a dressing for for a show. Um, Luckily, we were doing the show in January, so obviously not a lot of companies were actually using uh, their vans. Um, but I think that that was quite a tricky situation um, to to sort of do. Um, and it was like, so when I did it, and and when we got this amazing van, and when it turned up on the day, I was I was like, great, I've I've done something good here. I've really accomplished something. Um, you know, and then then there's also the situations that involve conflict and um, a part of sort of the stage management team, as I said earlier, is about pastoral care and it's about um, welfare and, and looking out for your company members and your crew members. Um, 
And there could be some really tricky situations where you might have a difficult um, cast member and there might be a situation that's happened between the cast. And it's so it's it's being able to communicate and work out those situations mm. um, effectively that's not going to affect everyone and the performance. And I think it's really key thing for a stage manager and actually most mm. people if you're kind of between the technical and the artist and always kind of managing that it's finding the different languages even though mm. that you need to speak in and making sure that everyone knows exactly because everyone's got so much different priorities that can be easily missed when someone isn't just that one bit of communication that can help people understand where other people are at is so vital and yeah. you stage managers uh, you guys are linchpins as well between that yeah, yeah, that, that's a really good point is everyone's got their own agenda. Everyone's got their own priority. Um, you know, every cast member thinks that they're the star and every crew member thinks that they're the star and everyone thinks that they're the most important person at that given time in, in any given point of a technical rehearsal, a, product, a dress rehearsal, a show. Um, and it's finding those ways of, as you said, using communication and ways of communicating and, and sort of bridging that gap so you can be like, yeah, you are really important, but then we also need this person to be really important as well. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's a very, you're very good at it. It's a very fine balance of just keeping that communication going. And also it's about um, having those moments of fun and levity, but then always going back into business, isn't it? It's like showing a bit more of a human side. rather. Yeah, than yeah, totally, totally. And there is a real fine balance on that, totally. Yeah, brilliant. I think we had, Jeanette has asked a really good question about the trickiest prop you found, but I think the burger story is... Uh, Unless there's another, is there a trickier prop than an empty burger van? Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the burger van was pretty tricky. That, 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 that's pretty spectacular, if I'm honest, that you did that in a week. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move, move on to Tony's question. Thank you for this, Tony, which is, um, what was one of the most rewarding situations you have done with stage management? So when you've been a stage manager, what's the most rewarding situation you've been in? Um... I think definitely when I worked on a community theatre show, so Citizen was a show that involved 20 members of the community um, that ranged from, they were 20 all the way through to 78. Um, none of them, well, most of them weren't professional actors. Some of them were uh, training actors and some of them were sort of just graduated. Um, so I think there was about three people that you would say were like, professional performing arts, artists, actors, uh, performers, and everyone else was, um, you know, a security guard and uh, a shopkeeper and a retired uh, veteran. And so that was a, a really rewarding show to be a part of. Um, but there was a particular moment where um, one of the participants, um, uh, they, they'd gone through sort of quite a lot of uh, trauma in their life and they literally st stood, stood on stage and just spoke about that trauma. Um, and it was one of the first times that they had told anyone other than, you know, their, their sort of support group, uh, let alone telling 200 strangers every night for a week. Um, so that was a super rewarding kind of moment to, to, witness the sort of journey of that person yeah. um growing more confident um be able to get to that point as well yeah. and again did yeah you, were you asming on there or dsming i was dsm on that one you were so. DSM, sorry. so you you were there for the whole process mm -hmm. day in, the whole rehearsal process yeah, yeah. like crying whilst i'm queuing as well because it's like <laughs> like 27 go <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Again, if you've got any more questions, Jeanette, Tony, or any else attending, that'd be lovely to have your questions thrown in. But I'm going to ask about this one, which is obviously in some situations, it's lovely when you have all those big teams. Like when you're with Catherine Jenkins, you've got a team of, you're a team of what? I don't know how many stage managers work or production managers you were on that show. Um, I had two runners under me. I had a production manager, a location manager, uh we're about a team of 10 in the production team wow so it's it's quite big but some cases um you're a team of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so how, how do you have 
what do you think need what parts of the roles are you doing because you're doing all four free worlds what parts of the roles do you like okay there if i'm by myself that's what i've got to do yeah that that's that's a really good point um i do find myself i am i am a single single you know team at points um and you know what yeah what i've spoken about kind of in my presentation tonight some of those things get slightly blurred um when you are one person um but you know it you are you're always making sure that everyone's organized and everyone's in knowledge and everyone is um on the same page so if you're a one-man band getting those production schedules together getting those um uh call times together and getting as much information to all different departments as you can there those are things at the top like three things i think you want to happen um yeah i'm gonna caveat that though because you said that and we've been in situations where yeah, it's been great the production schedule has run brilliantly on time and that's because of lots of prep and planning that you've done and it's been wonderful but what happens when that starts to shift and that starts to slip especially if we're talking more likely to happen on film than theater but even theater sound checks take longer there's a technical bug the yeah. live stream computer's dead for some reason. <laughs> do you know what i mean how do you compensate for that yeah, totally. Um, and again, it's it's going back to you think and, and plan for everything and every occasion. Um, that might, you know, that might just be in your head. So you don't necessarily like need to, to write that on paper because if you do, you might curse yourself, you know. But um, yeah, so so it's it's about kind of communicating again so let's say yeah we're, we're running an hour behind because there's so many technical areas and and something's gone wrong it's about communicating and go okay well what can we so if we're doing a film like when we did why would you and we were running behind it's going okay what can we drop um today and put into tomorrow's what can we compress can, you know so we've given an hour to do scene five which is actually only five lines do you think we could probably take 30 minutes out of that um, and then gain, so we've clawed back 30 minutes and put it into this scene, which actually is going to take another 10. And it's it's being able to update, constantly update your schedule as uh, throughout the day. Um, and, you know, and I mean, you've seen some of my production schedules I've done. They're just getting scribbled on and it's like times are changing. And, and it's just, it's about sort of live updating all the time. Um, and checking in and communicating and, and making sure that everyone knows and everyone's happy and you know so, so people don't feel rushed and you get the best work that you can and it's like from sound checking and stuff like with, with some of the live streams we've done and other stuff has been like okay this person's going to be an extra 10 minutes late let's put someone else in the sound check so they're not coming straight from rushing in slightly late to straight into sound check and then out again it's balanced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. i also as well in my schedules um i do also build in about five, 10 minutes longer mm. all the time. So um, I worked with a really great floor manager um, called Sonia and she so she works backwards um, from the time of a, of a thing finishing. Um, and she will always add five minutes onto every segment. So mm. what she does is to so say you've got four, four segments in your day, she's added 20 minutes on. Mm. Um, mm because it's inevitable that you're going to lose those 20 minutes yeah so you you run 20 minutes over but actually you still run to schedule um and I, i've always think as well as like from that point of view it's always going give you slight, slightly longer breaks than you actually probably need yeah. longer breaks longer lunches so then if you are running behind and there's no room no room to give you can be like okay at least for say me or you or someone who's being a bit more production side you can be like i can slam my lunch in, a, in 30 minutes rather than an hour yeah yeah that's really interesting we've got another question which is um what kit and tools are best to get if you're going to be working as a stage manager so is there like any equipment that you would need or like tools um like i always again just from my like personal experience i always have a laptop with me um you know you don't necessarily need the fanciest one in the world as long as you can you can open a document to write on, you know, and, and connect to lots of people who are using Google Drive now or Dropbox. So you connect connect to one of those. Um, yeah, I always have a laptop with me, a notebook, 
um, pens, paper, rubbers, um, a tape measure, electrical tape, um, a knife, uh, rope. I think like a Stanley knife. Oh, a Stanley knife. Is that for cutting tape and stuff? Or? Just, you never know. You never know. I just, I always carry a Stanley knife just in case. <laughs> Sorry, I could stop you in the flow there. I was just not expecting knife. That was quite an interesting <laughs> one. Come up. Yeah. Well, you know, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> carry scissors. Always have scissors as well. People always laugh at me because I have scissors in my daily life. I just oh. carry scissors in my bag. Ever walking down the street going, oh, I wish I had scissors now. And you're just like, like oh, here we go. There you happens go. to me all the time. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> that's great. And I think that's quite useful, isn't it? Because, it, again, it's kind of, it's something that everyone can have, isn't it? Yeah. But it's about applying it to always be prepared just to be available and helpful as a stage manager. Yeah. And uh, one thing I always find fascinating is how do you, because you're, you do become like the go-to people in any production that like be that in a situation where you like for me you have an angry director sat next to you who's a bit annoyed while the show hasn't started yet and you're looking at the dsm and he's going i'm sorry i haven't got house clearance and you're pleading with him but he's like no and he's dealing with the front of the house who are needing help because it was an emergency situation to being like oh in the middle of a day someone just asked you randomly to grab something or a question how do you deal with that workload from other people whilst managing your own responsibilities how hard is it to balance this though um i you know it it can be challenging it can be um it can be really difficult when you've got four things happening at once mm -hmm. um you know you've got someone in your ear on the radio and then you've got another radio on and then you've got someone talking to you and it, it can be really hard and i think that it just it does take a bit of experience of just kind of that those situations happening and getting used to them, but also realizing that it's not the end of the world if something goes wrong. Um, you know, I, I'm the worst for that. I beat myself up all the time if something goes wrong, but actually you just kind of have to accept it and carry on because you can't panic. You can't be the person panicking because you have to be the person that's calm and you're collective and you're going, okay, what can we do then? So. So something's gone wrong. So what are we going to do? What's going to what's going to happen now? Then what what are we going to change? What how are we going to keep us going? Um, so you can't be panicking about it. You can't be, um, you know, you, you kind of absorb it. You think about it, and you go great. So we're going to actually instead of doing A B C, we're going to do X Y Z. Um, and you know, it's it's just it is a bit of experience. It's a bit of like natural talent, being able to. <laughs> Um, kind of deal with that multitask, multi um, kind of thing. But yeah. And, and I guess what what's great from been working with you and other stage managers is the ones that are really great. It's about like communication being like, I'm really sorry. Can I just hold you there? Deal with one thing, deal with the other. Great. Is that fine? Unless it's something. And then if it's an emergency right in front of you, it's like emergency, emergency. Yeah. And that's really, again, key. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple more questions before we've got to wrap up but if this so uh, this is the last chance anyone watching to get your questions in um this question comes from ah comes from one of the barbican theatre um which is is there any particular kind of show you'd like to work on Ooh. Or really desperate like one show you're really desperate to do um or one show um I would really, 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 really like to work um, on, um, oh, I can't choose one. That's the problem. <laughs> There's all, uh, okay, choosing one, choosing one, I'm choosing one. I'd like to work on Mean Girls, the musical. Me <laughs> Amazing. Well, can I ask why? Just it's got really cool, um, like, trucks and um, animatronics in it and, like, flies and AV like projection. It's got like really cool technical elements that I would really enjoy like just being around. Yeah, that's Probably, I'd be the DSM on that. I'd like to call it, I'd like to call the show. Ah, oh, fab, oh, that's great. Um, and at the moment, is there any like in a particular style of show or kind of show that you enjoy doing more or find more like, is like from being, cause you're doing outside, you're doing film, you're doing theatre where you're calling, what, where, would you say you go actually cough cool, if i could do that day in day out what would i do 
Um, probably it's, it's, it is its community. It's um, like either verbatim or um, devised community theatre. Mm. I, I could do that every day for the rest of my life. I just think that it's, it's fantastic. It's so rewarding, um, you know, because you're not, you're not just making a show happen. It's not just a, a not, you know, not that I'm saying other shows aren't, but it's just, it's so rewarding. It's so like full. Um, and it's great because, you know, you don't have a script in front of you if you're doing a device show. You're making it up as you go along. So that can really be stressful and it can be really um, disconcerting of going, oh my God, I don't know the lines. I don't know how long the show is. I don't know what I need. Um, but it's super fun and it's a challenge and it keeps, you know, keeps you on your toes, which I really enjoy. And I guess it's a bit more collaborative for you as well. You can, mm. oh, yeah. Super, yeah, super collaborative. Um, and I enjoy that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a, a call. Any last questions before I ask this one question I really want to keep to the end that someone's asked. So we're going to do a bit of a bit of a calm time. Oh, yes, we've got one coming in. Drum or please, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh. One thing, oh, here we go. How has it been working as a freelancer during COVID? Terrifying. That, that, Absolutely that, terrifying. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. It was, it was really, really difficult. Um, I, in March... I had about um, eight jobs lined up from um, from April all the way through to December. Um, one of those was a big panto. Um, one of those uh, was quite a big show in the middle, um, and it was it was really really difficult to see overnight. Uh, you know, your entire industry crumble, uh, your eight months worth of work go um, and not know when you're going to see your next job. Um, it was really hard. But it's what I've been talking about this whole session is it's being adaptable and it's being able to change um, and use your skills and move into different things. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, you know, I used to be a performer. So I've got like those skills as well. So I was lucky enough to work with Nudge Community Builders because they did a um, street party in September of 2020. Um, so, you know, we just came out of lockdown and they put on their annual street party that they always do. But they kind of went, hang on, we need to social distance, but that's not very Nudge for us to be like, put your mask on and social distance. You know, that's, that's not them. So it was going, how can we make it fun? How can we make it Nudge-like? Um, so they hired me to kind of like as a stage manager, but also like a creator. So I created this entertainment because I said, I can do this, I do entertainments because I've refined these skills, you know, over the lockdown. Mm. Um, and yeah, and, and it, you know, we, we were like the social distances to make sure people were, but at yeah. the same time, making it fun and making it engaging. Yeah, a, f a fun social, a fun social barrier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, and I guess it's those things about being adaptable and just and keeping going because it has been a ter <laughs> terrifying time. Yeah. But obviously, we're actually very excited because we're coming out of this and we at the Barbican are doing some really exciting work. We've got our puppet parade next week, for example, which is, and then we've also got our big show, which you can now buy tickets for called Petrol Heads. Mm. And Tim has the joy of the light of working with the show, which is community dancers, professional dancers mixed with cars, drifting cars dirt bikes, parkourists, skaters. Mm. So two questions in this, which is what are you most looking forward to? Yeah. And what scares you about it? <laughs> um, I am most looking forward to being, well, having a large cast um, and it being like a hybrid of um, like an, a, a, an event and a theatre show. Um, and also to have live audience back because we haven't we haven't done a show with a live audience in a really long time, um, you know. I think I think the last correct me if I'm wrong, but the last live audience we had was December uh, in the city centre. Yeah, that would be the last. Yeah, that would be the last. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's like, we, you know, we're coming up to six months of like, bef since we've had an audience of sorts. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about putting on a live show. What scares me the most? Uh, probably um, the idea of parkourists jumping over moving cars and skaters doing um, tricks next to cars driving up on ramps. Um, it keeps me awake at night. Yeah. <laughs> how do you then mitigate that? Because obviously it's keeping you awake uh, as it does. But how do you, like in your head, it, how are you approaching building those kind of safety nets or how you call that? Yeah, well, well, it's, you know, it's it's going, okay, well, this is a huge risk because this is a, a two-ton car and a human being. So, you know, we are going to have to build into the schedule rehearsals. The car can't go faster than X, you know, it can't, uh, you know, drive around and do back, uh, uh, do like wheelies or donuts or whatever. It's got to be this and it's got to be this and it's got to be rehearsed and both the driver and the parkourist have to be happy with what it is, what what the action is. Um, we have to be satisfied. Um, you know, the DSM has to be satisfied. And it's kind of like, again, it's, it's communicating and going, is everyone happy with this? Do we think this is actually achievable? Or are we risking? Are we putting a risk? And of course, you know, we've had these conversations already um, in our production meetings and there is, it's not gonna be risky because we have a wonderful team um, full of wonderful people that are going to make sure that it's not, but also be really cool. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So if you want to get tickets, I'm just putting in the chat that all of you guys, all of the, the way to buy tickets, which is online to do, because it's going to be an extraordinary, extraordinary show that Tim's going to be the most wonderful stage manager on. And I think I'm going to wrap it up here. So thank you for all your wonderful questions, guys. It was really, really great to have your input there. Final question, which does come from someone, which is, what is your advice for anyone setting out to be a stage manager? My advice for wanting to become a stage manager is um, be confident. Um, you know, as I've said this whole time, I'm myself emerging. I don't have 20 years of experience, but I'm managing at a massive event, like uh, stage managing a massive event like Petrol Heads. Because it's being confident in your abilities, it's, um, knowing that you can do it. Um, I think all it takes is for people to see what you can do and then they go, oh, actually, that person's really great. They can do that. So my advice would be, yeah, be confident, go and do everything, get experience with technical theatre, um, get experience um, as an assistant stage manager, go and shadow, um, the, uh, shadow a show caller, find out if you can go and stand backstage, um, you know, obviously after COVID. Um, and just watch what happens. Um, go and see as much live theatre as you, you know, possibly can. And as you're watching it going, oh, I wonder, I, you know, how does that fly come down? Or like, and find, and then, yeah, get involved with um, all of the things that Barbican Theatre are running, the things that are being, um, that are happening in the city. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, yeah. Timothy Norman, Timmy Norm. What a many different different names. And it's been wonderful, wonderful having you here. And thank you all for attending this. Is as you mentioned, this has been very insightful and brilliant. We are going to be coming back with some Rebels Masterclasses. We haven't got the confirmed dates and times yet, but keep an eye on our website. And we'll let you know when they're up and about. More of these wonderful talks. And we are moving in person. Already our Rebels classes are in person. So if you know anyone aged 12 to 25, come in person. Come join and come be part of Petrol Heads. Um, it has been really, really great to have you all here. If you feel free to donate, please, if you can, the donation slide is going to come up right at the end of this. So please give some money because it really helps us continue doing this work and keeping it free of access, free of charge. And so please, please do that. Other than that, have a wonderful evening. I hope the sun comes out soon <laughs> and we'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye.